Ahoy, landlubber. You're volunteering to come aboard? Usually we have to fill them with rum, drag them aboard, and ship them off before they sober up again. All right. My name's Sam. I'm a captain here, and there may be some things I could teach you. The most important thing is to know where you're sailing to. Climb into the lookout, take the telescope, and look around. You can also look around in all directions. Don't worry, there are no octopuses or sirens here. To know exactly where you are, of course, you need a good naval chart. Here in the area, there are 60 towns. Spanish, English, French, and these money bags from the Netherlands. And of course, pirates from all over the world. I'm sure you'll recognize one or the other convoy. For example, these could be merchants or military convoys. The only way to find out exactly is to get close enough with one of your own convoys, which is not always a good idea. Check out Port Royal, your hometown during this exercise. This is the town on the island in the middle of the Caribbean. Your convoy is in the port of the town. Select it. No vessels, no trade. It's as simple as that. Such a convoy consists of up to 10 ships. But for you, one is fine for now. Until you can hire sailors and a real good captain, you'll have to show that you can handle yourself. Take a look at the different parts of the convoy. We're not sailing around here for fun. It's about trade between the towns and commodities and gold. Select the town Port Royal to open up the town dialogue. But select the whole town, not a single building. So don't zoom in too far. A town is nothing without its inhabitants. These consist of workers and their families. The workers toil in the businesses and on farms and produce the commodities. The fine gentlemen like to come up with an attitude, but it is very important that the inhabitants are satisfied, because otherwise they simply run away. The supply... Now select the production tab. Sure, every town also produces its own commodities, up to seven different ones, but people want more. And that's where trade comes into play, and your convoy. It brings the people what they cannot produce themselves. Now select the Trade Between Town and Convoy tab. Everything that people want can be found on the market, or maybe not. And then they get dissatisfied. Each item also displays production, consumption, and the current price. The better the demand of a commodity is covered for the next weeks. The lower the price. That makes sense, doesn't it? So commodities produced in a town are usually quite cheap. Now select grain and buy 20 barrels. While the grain is being loaded into your convoy, let's see where the shortage is. There you can then sell the commodities with profit and make people happy at the same time. Now close the town dialogue. If you zoom out of the map far enough, you will see more towns northeast of Port Royal. 
Move the cursor over these towns to see the commodities they produce. Tortuga looks good. Send your convoys there. Make sure the whole town lights up when you send a convoy there. After all, he's supposed to dock in the harbor and not drift around outside the town. Now we'll wait until your convoy arrives in Tortuga. If you want to make a rapid progress, just zoom out. The further you zoom out, the faster time will pass. Ah, arrived in Tortuga. No evening without beer, rum, and brawls. So open the town dialogue. Now open the trade tab again and sell all of your grain to the town. Great! You still have to get used to all the commodities and prices, but through trade you can earn the most money. For this, I offer a special course about the Caribbean economy. And there is also a lesson about creating automatic trade routes. By the way, in Port Royal, they need wood. Buy 50 units and return to Port Royal. There is work to be done at the shipyard. Until the convoy reaches Port Royal, a tip from me. Convoys cost money, maintenance, and repairs. Avoid empty trips and load your vessels as much as possible. Port Royal! 
the smell of seaweed, old fish, and hope for prosperity. Zoom in on the town until you see the shipyard and select it. Convoys that are on the road a lot, the shells have to be scraped off regularly. And that's what the shipyard is for. But you can also get a new barge here if you need more cargo space. Buy a new vessel and get out of here for now. Your vessel is still in the shipyard and you can't even see it. You have to add it to a convoy first or convert it into a new one. We do that at the lighthouse. Select it. On the left, you can see the selected convoy and your unused vessels on the right. By selecting a vessel, it switches sides. That way you can enlarge, reduce, or dissolve convoys. If no convoy is selected, you can create a new convoy with free vessels. Now add your new vessel to the existing convoy. Not bad for a landlubber. The basics are in place. One more thing. Whenever you come across one of these info icons, you can use it to open the appropriate pages in the manual for Caribbean merchants. Try it. The info icon will always bring you to the right place in the manual. You can also open the manual at any time and just browse through it. All right, you've got the basics down, I hope. But there's a lot of people out there just waiting to make a rookie like you walk the plank. So I'm recommending my other classes as well. Don't... All rested up and ready for the Caribbean economy? Let's go! First, select your convoy in the harbor of Port Royal. Is that clear? Check the hold of your convoy to see what you just loaded. We'll need it later. A lot of beer! Beer is important. Does not make you as drunk as rum and not as sick as spoiled water. Now open the town dialogue of Port Royal. To do so, select the whole town from a greater distance, or, if the camera is close by, the town hall or undeveloped areas. Here you can see the inhabitants who live here and have to be taken care of. About one quarter of them are workers. Some of what they produce can be traded with other towns. Below you can see which cultivation and mining commodities can be produced in the town and how efficient such a production would be. Handicrafts such as clothing can be produced equally well in all towns. People always ask for all commodities and the variety of commodities affects the satisfaction. In small settlements, however, simple commodities are more important. If the town grows, the inhabitants become more demanding and the upscale commodities becomes more important. Now switch to the production tab to see the production of the town. Each town can produce a maximum of seven different commodities. Here you can see what is produced in Port Royal per day. This is much more than the inhabitants themselves need. The surplus can then be traded with other towns. Your businesses will be here later. Now switch to the trade between town and convoy tab to see the commodities on the town's market. Here you can see all commodities that are available, sorted by their importance for the inhabitants. The first column shows the fill level of a commodity. This is the ratio of supply to demand. From two green bars on, a commodity is no longer scarce. From four bars on, it is in abundance. Here you can see how many commodities are in stock at the market of the town and in the selected convoy. The convoy must of course be anchored in the harbor of the same town. By buying and selling, you move commodities between the town and the convoy. 
Here you can see what the town produces and consumes. This includes commodities that serve as raw material for other products. Compare stock and fill level. The longer the stock lasts, the more secure and satisfied the citizens feel. The price of a commodity changes constantly because it depends on supply and demand. The higher the fill level, the lower the price. For the beginning, you should remember, buy from two green bars, sell until two green bars. The last column shows the average price you paid for a commodity. Of course, you should always sell a commodity at a higher price. Take a look at the price of beer. The average price of your loaded commodities is lower than the current price in the town. People want beer, and you can give it to them. To do this, select the commodity and slowly move the amount from right to left. You can see how the stock and the fill level of the town increases and the price per unit decreases. Now sell your beer supply to the town and close the town dialogue. Very nice. Now show what you have learned. There's an abundance of grain in Port Royal right now. Buy at least 100 barrels. The commodities are on board. Now you need a destination. I recommend Port-au-Prince, east of Port Royal. Set up your convoy there. Open the town dialogue and get a trade license. Then you sell the grain to the town.
Excellent. That was my Caribbean economy crash course. It's really very simple. Buy cheap and sell dear. And don't waste all the profits on drinks. You should now understand what the price of commodities depends on. In the beginning, you do the trading yourself. Later, you set up trade routes and leave the trading to your convoys. Of course, always to your specifications. You want to sail comfortably over the sea and enjoy the wind and waves? Then you're in the wrong place. I want to teach you how to organize your convoys so that they yield more profit for you. And we'll start right away. Choose your convoy that anchors at Port Royale. Here you can see if the convoy has additional sailors. You can hire these via the trade dialogue if there are workers available in a town. Sailors are only needed by your combat vessels during naval battles. The total number of cannons of the convoy is displayed here. A convoy can only fight in naval battles if it has combat vessels, because only these vessels have cannons. If there is a battle, the sailors of the convoy will be distributed among the combat vessels. You already know the different areas of a convoy. Select the area vessels. Here, you can see the vessels of your convoy. It's important that you understand the difference between a vessel and a convoy. Even if... Suppose you buy a vessel in the shipyard. Then it will stay there until it belongs to a convoy. Only then it gets a crew and is put into the harbor. From that moment on, you can fill the vessel with commodities and put it to sea. Free vessels are something like dead capital. They are not operational but they don't generate any costs. Two buildings in the town are important when it comes to vessels. The shipyard and the lighthouse. Let's first have a look at the shipyard in Port Royale. Select it to enter it. You have to zoom in close enough to the town, otherwise you won't be able to select individual buildings. In the shipyard, you can repair, buy, and sell vessels. As you can see, the vessel in your convoy could use a little overhaul. Get it done! Great! While the repairs are being carried out, we look at the vessels the shipyard is currently offering for sale. To do so, select the next area in the shipyard. Larger shipyards sometimes offer used vessels for sale. These can come from bankrupt merchants, for example. This is a good opportunity for you to get a new vessel quickly and easily. Just buy the two vessels on offer. This military frigate needs command points. This applies to all vessels with cannons. They can only be included in convoys that have a captain. And people trained in this field do not grow on trees. For the really big vessels, you have to prove that you are loyal to your nation and accumulate fame here represented by fame points. Your fame increases when you do things that our dear Viceroy particularly likes. More on this later, in another lesson. Now look at the other parts of the shipyard. You can sell vessels which you don't need anymore and order the construction of vessels. However, this always takes a while and there must be enough building material available at the town's market before the shipyard can start the construction. To build new convoys or add new vessels to a convoy now, you need the lighthouse. Now close the shipyard and open the lighthouse of Port Royale. On the left side, your selected convoy is displayed. On the right side, you can see your free vessels, which are docked in the harbor. Just select a vessel to move it between the port and the convoy. If you have not selected a convoy that is anchored in the harbor, a new convoy will be displayed on the left side, which you can create with your vessels.
Now close the lighthouse again. We have just talked about captains. Choose the captains tab in your convoy. A convoy is ready to go even without a captain, but a captain improves many characteristics and allows to carry armed vessels. Unfortunately, such captains are hard to find, and for each, you need a captain's license. You can get a captain's license from your viceroy, but more about this in a later lesson. If a captain applies to you, this will be displayed here. Now open the captain's dialog. Here you can see which captains are working for you, or who is applying as a captain. Every captain has other skills that will improve with time. Take a look at everything and then hire the captain. A captain doesn't work for free, so don't forget to assign him to a convoy after you hire him. Otherwise, you'll pay for doing nothing. Now assign the captain to your convoy. Very good. With the help of their command points, captains can lead armed vessels. The higher the level of a captain, the more command points he can use. And that concludes this lesson about vessels and convoys. See you soon.